Right now, my first guest is a former Major General in the U.S. Army and the original commander in charge of training the Iraqi troops. Please welcome General Paul D. Eaton. General. Hey, great to be with you, Bill. How you doing? Terrific. Sounds like you got a great crowd out there. <laughs> yeah, we do have a good crowd here. And I thank you for doing this show. I thank you for, for coming out and speaking, because I know uh, when you're a military man, probably the hardest thing to do is to speak out uh, in a way that's not positive about the people up above you in the chain of command. Uh, so let's start with the Walter Reed situation. I heard a senator say the other day, let's not point fingers and blame. Why not? Shouldn't we be exactly pointing fingers and blaming? We've got a real mess on our hands. This is really a bad deal for, uh, for the men and women coming back who are injured, and they need the best support that they can. And uh, i got to tell you, it goes back to the very beginning of this administration's prosecution of the war. We just didn't prepare well at the administration level all the way down. So uh, this, this train left the station in 2003. But shouldn't we blame? <laughs> well, let me put it another way. Who should we blame? Well, you got to blame up and down. And uh, the, the, the primary guy, you know, it's not just about money mold and mice. We've, we've got a, uh, a problem in managing the, uh, the caseload that we've got. And wait, wait, wait. You said primary guy. Who's the, who's the primary guy? You started to say oh, the primary guy. I'll put it right on Rumsfeld's shoulders. Oh. This Rumsfeld was the primary architect of the disasters that we've got going on right now. And you know, he's probably shrugging his shoulders out there going, you know, I'm guilty for Walter Reed as well as everything else. And he is. He set the stage for uh, the, the management of this war and the management of the aftermath of combat. And, and I, I read in your op-ed piece in the New York Times this week, you said this is just the tip of the iceberg. What is the rest of the iceberg? We've got a distributed medical uh, command out there that uh, relies heavily upon case managers to help young men and women who have been injured. And some of these injuries uh, get after the, uh, the psyches of the, uh, the soldiers involved. And if you can't help them through this bureaucratic maze that, uh, that's always been there, we've got these old databases, we've got these old software systems, and it, it's just tedious. And it, and it takes seasoned case managers who have a rational caseload to help these men and women through it. And uh, what's happened is the, the families have had to kick in and interpret systems and help these guys and gals through it. And it's just flat wrong. It seems like loyalty is a one-way street in that Bush administration. I've got real problems with this administration. I, we, we are in the midst of recovering right now from a constitutional crisis where you had the executive trump the other branches of government and the executive concentrated in President Bush, Vice President Cheney, and Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld. And with the arrival of a Democratic-controlled Congress, thank God, in 7 November, we've got a chance to unsort and to figure out uh, how to get out from under this. But I, 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 I tell you, you, you don't often hear military people use the phrase arrival of Democrats and thank God in the same <laughs> sentence. Right? And, and I'm just wondering, I mean, I've said this before, I feel like the troops have this dysfunctional, abusive relationship with George Bush. The more he mistreats them, the more they seem to like him. I mean, the only speeches he ever makes are in front of troops or toddlers, <laughs> the only two groups of people who won't boo him, and I'm not that sure about the toddlers. Uh, why do they still like George Bush? We... <laughs> We've got... <laughs> this thing that, uh, you know, so many military believe that Republican administrations are good for the military. That is rarely the case. And uh, we have got to get a, uh, a, a message through to every soldier, every family member, every friend of soldier, that the Republican Party, the Republican-dominated Congress, has absolutely been the worst thing that's happened to the United States Army and the United States Marine Corps. I didn't know you felt that way. Um, well, let 
me ask you about this. There, there are two plans that the Democrats seem to have, or that they're floating, in Congress. One is to defund the war. Uh, the other one is to set a timetable. The Bush administration says both things would somehow hurt the troops. Uh, would it hurt the troops if we defunded the war? Would that affect them? It would be a very serious problem for the United States Army, and it would be political suicide for the Democratic Party. Wow. We, we have got to uh, come after this uh, problem in a, uh, in a different vector. We've got to go after some of the things that this president, I hate to use the word contain, but uh, there is a containment opportunity here for the executive branch of government today. But, but General Petraeus, who's, who's our, our man in charge there now, and, and by all accounts, a brilliant guy, incredibly capable, you'd agree? I've known Dave for a long time. He is a superb human being. He is a superb soldier, and he is a great leader. Well, that would qualify as an un <laughs> unqualified recommendation. Uh, but he said the other day, any student of history recognizes there is no military solution in Iraq. To which I would say, then, General, what are you doing there? Well, I tell you, this administration has dropped this load on the shoulders of the United States Army and the Marine Corps. And uh, you have seen absent the uh, State Department and the rest of the President's Cabinet in trying to get after the political, the economic, the diplomatic solutions that we need to work to get this thing done right. But the military has been shouldering the entire burden of this drama since 2003. Boy, they and sure it's high, have. It's high time that we get the rest of the United States government into this fight. Well, if there's anybody who knows about... <laughs> anybody who knows about high time, it's me, General. I thank you very much for being here, and I thank you for our, your service to our country. Hey, Bill, I got one last question. Generally, all right, let's meet our panel. Thank you, sir.